Okay, so if you're still having trouble finding the main connect connective expression, let me try to work things slightly differently. Let's say you have an expression like P therefore Q. Now you already know that this is a horseshoe statement and that this horseshoe statement has as its main connective the horseshoe, right? So I've got my antecedent here and my consequent. When we're trying to find the main connective of a compound statement, what we're really looking for is that horseshoe statement. So if I have something like P and I replace P with R and S or T, and then I have a horseshoe statement and I were to replace Q with some other substitution instance. So let's say I replaced it with another horseshoe statement, something like W therefore T. Well, now the question would be, what's the main connective? Well, normally there's going to be some set of parentheses or some natural break that will tell you. So in this instance, when I look at the expression, I can still see that this whole thing is bound by those two parentheses on the outside. And this is bound by the parentheses on the outside. So therefore, that remains the main connective. Now, if someone were to throw in an extra set of parentheses, which you'll often see in the book, something like this, well, that doesn't actually change the grouping inside. What this tells me is that this entire thing is one big expression, right? So this is the whole expression, just like this whole thing is one expression. What's in these, in the antecedent, is grouped together, these two parentheses bracket, or um, hold in everything that's in the antecedent, where the parentheses on the other side hold in what's in the consequent, right? And so this sort of stands out as the main connective here. Now it works the same with any other, other expression. So if I have P or Q, and I say, well, what kind of expression substitution can I do here? Well, for P, I could have anything like T and S, and I could have or, and let's say I do a substitution in for Q, and let's make that R or W. Now right here, just as I have written it here, we can see that it's easy enough that these parentheses and the second set of parentheses holds the left and right disjuncts, which leaves the horseshoe, ta horseshoe intact. Now if I were to take and add a few other things, so let's say I have the same thing, T and S or R or W, and I put these outside parentheses on here. Notice that doesn't change anything. It just means, oh, this is all one big expression, just like this is all one expression. What's then on, on the inside here, on the left side and the right side of the disjunct, those are both the two pieces, and the or statement is still the main connective. Now imagine I changed things just a little bit. So imagine I rewrote this, and I said, T and S, or R, or, oops, we should make sure, All right, R, or W, and then I were to throw a negation on the front of this. Well, now I've actually changed the expression. Now it turns out that I don't have an OR statement, as I did up here, I actually have a negation. So now it matters that these parentheses are on the outside. Notice I can get rid of in this example right here, I can take these away and you would still have, notice in here, you would still have an OR statement. When I get to this, this last stage though, by adding the negation out front, I've now made that a negation and not a OR statement. And if I actually added another negation in front, then this outside negation would actually be the main connective. So this would, this one right here would negate everything in there and then the finally, the most out, outside negation would be the main connective. So really what you wanna do is, is look at this and say, which things are grouped together? Which are grouped together 
naturally group together. So for example, we have, again, something like P and Q. If I have P and Q, I can have R or S and T with nothing else, with no other parentheses. And it's obvious that this conjunction has a left conjunct, which is R or S, and a right conjunct, which is just T by itself. If I throw in parentheses on the outside, it doesn't change that the conjunction is still the main connective. All right, so that still remains the main connective. It also doesn't matter if I added or S and put more parentheses. Again, these two terms are joined together, held together by the parentheses. These are held together. That still remains the main connective. So really what you're looking for is the grouping, the natural grouping. So if you, if you see parentheses on the outside of a very big expression, oftentimes those can be dropped. Those are actually unnecessary when writing out the equation. So even in the first example, the first horseshoe statement example up here, these outmost parentheses are really not necessary because the grouping on the inside is telling me exactly what is supposed to be contained in the antecedent and what's supposed to be in the consequent.